Hello and welcome to this episode of the Industrial Engineering Notebook. Today's topic is derivative rules. The goal of this video is to be able to look at an equation and know the equation of the derivative without needing to plot the slope of the tangent line for each value of x. That's a lot of work. We also don't always know what the equation is going to look like on a graph when you plot it. So we just want to look at the equation and know the derivative. And there are some rules that will tell us what the derivative looks like for different kinds of equations. So we're going to go over those. First up is the power rule. So in the power rule, if you have a function that looks like f of x equals c times x to the power of n, and c here and n are, these guys are constants. So they're not the variable that we're looking at, they're just constant numbers like five, and it just doesn't change. But x is our variable, that changes. The derivative of this function, or f prime of x, would be n times c times x to the power of n minus one. So some examples of that, if we have f of x equals four x to the third power, then f prime of x would be three times four, that would be n times c, which is 12, times x to the power of n minus one, or three minus one, which is two. So the derivative would be 12 x squared. Or for two x squared, we'd have a derivative that is like this, 4x, so you just subtract 1 from 2 up here, so it's x to the first power, or just x, and then 2 times 2 is 4. If you have f of x equals x, c equals 1, because 1 times x is just x, and n here is also 1, x to the first power is just x. So we'd get 1 times x to the 0 power, which is just anything to the 0 power is 1, so the derivative is just one. Last example is f of x equals five. So that would be the same as five x to the zero, which is still five. So f prime of x, in this case, you multiply zero by five, which equals zero times x to the negative one, but the x to the negative one doesn't even really matter because anything times zero is zero. So the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. And then one quick note, if you add a bunch of these terms together and get a function that looks like this, don't overthink it. You can just apply the power rule to each of these terms separately and put Frankenstein back together. So this would be the derivative. We just applied the power rule to each of these terms separately and put them back together. Next up, special functions. This isn't really a rule, but there are some functions that you're just gonna need to know the derivative of. And you'll remember the, I mean, it's not rote memorization. You'll really learn these with practice. So if you don't know them, like the back of your hand, you haven't practiced enough. F of x equals e to the x. If you remember, e is Euler's constant. It is 2.718281813, blah, 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 blah. e to the x. The derivative here is really complicated. F prime of x equals e to the x. That's why this constant is so special. That's why we use it, is because the derivative of this function is the same thing. This is super important once you get to differential equations. So I recommend remembering this. If we have f of x equals sine of x, then f prime of x is going to equal cosine of x. If f of x equals cosine of x, then f prime of x equals negative sine of x. That negative sign is tricksy, so remember it. And then last special function that we're gonna do, f of x equals the natural log of x, or ln of x. f prime of x equals one over x. Now we're gonna move into when we're working with two functions that combine to make a single function. Sounds complicated, but it'll make sense. So now we're on the product rule. If you have a function that is the product of two other functions, the derivative is gonna look like this. g of x times h prime of x, so this one stays the same, then you take the derivative of the other one, plus g prime of x times h of x. So it looks complicated, but quick example. So here are two functions. We got x to the third here times another function sine of x. So f prime of x would just be leave x to the third alone, take the derivative of sine of x, which is just cosine of x like we talked about, plus g prime of x. So take the derivative of x to the third now, we'll get three x squared times h of x, which is just sine of x. Bam, derivative. Next up is the quotient rule. And this is the rule we use when we have one function divided by another function. And here, f prime of x would equal 
low d high minus high d low over low squared. You're like, what? What's that? Great question. This is just a tool to remember it. Real equation. Low d high is just the bottom, the denominator, h of x, times d high, the derivative of what's on top. So g prime of x minus high d low all over low squared. So I find that this is much easier to remember. I don't know, maybe this is more helpful. Whatever works. If we had f of x equals 4x over cosine of x, we just applied that little formula and we'll get low d high minus high d low all over low squared. We can simplify it just a little bit. And just like that, we have a nice clean function for the derivative. Next, chain rule. So here, f of x equals g of h of x. So x is the input into h, h spits out a number, it's a function that spits out a number, and then you plug whatever h spits out into g. So g of h of x, it's a function eating another function basically, or a function feeding another function, I guess it's a matter of perspective. Anyway, the derivative is gonna be derivative of the outside function, so g prime of h of x times the derivative of the inside of the function. A quick learning whatever thing that I use to remember this is just derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside. So cosine of 2x to the fourth would just be derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside. We can write that a little bit cleaner. And a quick example with our friend e to the x. We have e to the power of negative 3x squared. We'll have the derivative of the outside, so that would be e to the x, that's the outside function in this case. And the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so we'll keep that the same, times the derivative of the inside. So this is the inside in this case. So two times negative three is negative six, times x to the two minus one, which is just x to the one. And writing that a little bit more cleanly, that. We got a derivative on our hands. If you liked this video, you should hit the like button. To see more of these videos, well, then you should probably hit the subscribe button. And if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments.